Yeah, he, he pawns off whatever he doesn't want to do to me, um, which is great because I love reading scripture. So uh, today I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians 12, verses 11 through 14. And these are going to be pretty familiar, but let's hear them. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And the people of the Lord say, All right, you may be seated. We have a memory verse for this week, for this month, for this series. And um, it comes from uh, the passage that we read last week. And it is 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Would you say it with me today? To each person, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the benefit of all. We at New Covenant believe that the memorization of Scripture, when we take the passages of Scripture and read them over and over and make them a part of who we are, it exudes from us the love of Jesus Christ into the lives of others. And so we, I encourage you to uh, find ways to take your card, put it on somewhere on your mirror at home, on your refrigerator, someplace that you can repeat it over and over because repeating the words are the, or one way that we continue to practice to memorize, or put, to put it to memory. So I encourage you to do that. Last week, we began our sermon series, Building Together, and we were reminded that the Spirit has gifted each for the benefit of all. We talked about how we are living bricks and the Holy Spirit is the mortar and how the Holy Spirit, as the mortar, gives us the uh, strength and the power to accomplish what we are co commissioned to do, to know God and to make God's love known everywhere. And so today we're going to dig just a little bit deeper as we journey into this passage. When we look at verses 11 through 14, I really focus in on verses 12 and 13, because verse 12, Paul's words, hear them again. For just as the body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. The remarkable phrase here that I want us to really hear, because we are focused today on finding community, is Paul makes a daring claim. He doesn't say that the, just as the body, though one has many parts, and so it is with the church. He says, so it is with Christ. He makes a daring claim that we, as the people, though many, and all have our own gifts and stuff that we bring, are one in Christ. And we are in Christ. And so therefore, we are the body of Christ. This remarkable phrase not only suggests that we as the church participate in what God is doing, but we are the, are the only way that some people will ever see Jesus. It is a profound equation to equate us as people who come from a place of brokenness to be equated with in Christ Jesus. Because it is through the transformation of God in our own lives that others see Jesus in us. It is through what John the Baptist called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you remember, John was asked about if he was the Messiah and he responds with, 
No, I baptize you with the baptism of repentance, but there is one coming who I cannot even untie his sandals. But he will baptize you with the Spirit. And in that passage, the word baptize is baptismo, and that it that translates is the same word used when um, we in our English language call, would pickle something. So what do you do when it pickle? When you pickle a cucumber, it becomes a pickle. It is literally transformed. It may look the same, but it is transformed into something else. And we may look the same on the outside, but when Christ comes in, we are transformed to be the body of Christ. And we, are, we were created for one another. We need one another to be who God, all that God has called us to be. We are distinct and yet one because our identity is not found in all of the things, but is in Christ Jesus. Paul points to that we points to that when he says that we in verse 13 that we have not we drink of the same spirit. We are not, it's not the same type, so that we are all uniform, but it is the same spirit who gives each person according to the giftedness. That God desires. And we're going to dig into a little bit more of this, but I want you to hear that we are connected. We are not all the same, but because of our belief and transformed lives through Jesus Christ, we are one in Christ Jesus. We belong to one another. I've said more than one time Christianity is not an individual sport. It is a team sport. It is not a spectator sport for you just to show up and then move on. Because in our very being, we were created to be in community. We need one another. Our culture and our own sinful desires have separated us, and sometimes in doing that has isolated us from community. And there are enough people who think that they can do faith alone that it creates problems. Because anytime you think that this is just Jesus and me, there's another thing coming. Because you and I are the body of Christ. Not I cannot do all of the things that God requires us and has commissioned us to do as the body of Christ. We are called to lift one another and to be with one another. We are call, all called to get in the game and play the position in which God has called us. But we'll put more on that next week. Did you know that psychologists tell us that our society is longing to belong? Psychologists say that there are more and more people who will enter chat rooms or be a part of Facebook groups or all of these things to, just to feel a sense of belonging. And those things are attractive because you can literally be anything you want to in some of those and somewhat anonymously, and yet someone knows your name, but they don't really know you. There are people who have said that they have found their best friends online, even though they have never really met them in person. The truth is we could be anything we want to be online. But when we choose to find community and to be in face-to-face relationships, there is something that happens. Did you know that an infant, if after given birth, is simply just given food, and is not cared for with human touch, will die. Human touch is necessary for survival. And we as a body of believers believe that when Christ has called us into community, it is necessary for our individual spiritual journey. Because what the world has created 
is a false sense of community. It is a community around a thing and not around a person. We all need that connection. There was a one psychologist who said that we in America have such an epidemic of loneliness that we literally are a society, a nation of strangers. And the church is to call us back to who we are to be. I want you to know that by the fourth century, the churches in Rome were feeding an estimated 20,000 poor people each week. That's a bother. Feeding a 20,000 poor people each week. The church at the time represented in the world a visible alternative to the prevailing social order. Historians say that the church of the early centuries between the, the first century and the fifth century transformed their communities in such a way that it was seen visibly as an alternative to the social order. One author put it this way, Christianity entered human history as a new social order, or rather a new social dimension. From the very beginning, Christianity was not simply a doctrine to be adhered to, but a community to belong to. There was not only a message to proclaim and delivered the good news to be declared, but it was precisely a new community distinct and peculiar in the process of growth and formation to which its members were called and recruited. Indeed, koinonia was had. It was the basic experience category. For Christianity was seen that community was a building foundation for growing together in Christ. Paul makes this well known in all of his letters to the Galatians and to the Ephesians. He says things um, over and over where he talks about that in connecting the Gentiles and the Jews, that there's no longer these distinctions. We are one in Christ Jesus, God's holy people built up as the building of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are family. I recently attended a conference in in, in which one of the women from there is from Hawaii. And she was talking about how coming, we we were from, we're women from all, all over. There were women from Arkansas and all those Southern little places where they talk really funny. Um, and uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, you know. Um, And then we had a couple of people from Washington State and Hawaii. And she said, I felt as though we were family because we had come together with one purpose. And that was to deepen our own faith in Jesus Christ through the community of others who were here for the same purpose. So she used, she said, this is a Hawaiian word and you may have heard it before. We are ohana. We are family. And being family means that you are an integral part of something. You belong. You aren't just a participant once in a while, but you are integral to every aspect of what takes place. John Wesley said it this way. While he was talking to a man who had come, recently come to Christ, talk about walking in his faith and that he could do this on his own. He told him, remember, you cannot serve him alone. You must therefore find companions or make them. The Bible knows nothing of solitary religion. We are called to be in community. We are called to find ways in which we connect with one another so that we build up the kingdom of God so that the world beyond these walls 
sees that there's something distinctly different about who Christ is in us. Because, friends, if the world doesn't recognize that going to church makes you different, then we've missed the boat. We must live our faith out loud in the hallways at work, in the hallways at school, in our families. Our passage this morning reminds us that we are one. We have unity because it is in Christ alone who we stand. And that unity binds us together as the body of Christ, as family. And what does family do when there is trouble, when there is a need? But we come together and we pray for one another and we lift one another up. And we gather together to affirm one another. It is the only place where we can find true community so that we might live it out loud to those around us. Others, when they see us, may think, I'm not sure about that. Because if we truly live as the community of faith that God has called us to, It will be distinctly different. And just as it transformed communities in the early church in the first first through the fourth, fifth centuries of the world, we can transform our communities through being a part of the community of faith that God has placed us in. And when we God gives us a place to belong, He gives us a place. To serve. We are called to serve one another. We are the body of Christ. And it may seem odd and it may seem something that, that um, is out of sorts in our current society. But when we walk the way of Christ, we can be a place where those who are isolated and alone find community and find hope. For when we know God and make God's love known everywhere, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we walk by faith and the love of Jesus exudes from our very being. And that's who we are called to be. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for the ways in which you show us that we are to find community, that we are to be community for one another. And as we seek to deeply walk as followers of Jesus Christ, led by your light and your love, May your love overflow in us that others will seek community in a relationship with you. That we might draw others and point them to you. Pray this in Jesus' holy name.